What is the importance of a biopsy showing amyloid uh, from your perspective? We're ultimately going to circle back uh, to Akshay and the heart, but let's start out with um, polyneuropathy. So again, with hereditary disease, you're born with the trait from day one, uh, but it's not a guarantee you'll develop the disease. So as you alluded to, it's incomplete penetrance. So tissue is helpful in my mind uh, to identify that the disease process has begun. And usually once it's begun, it's, uh, it's a ball rolling downhill. It continues uh, and doesn't stop. So in an early case where you're not sure, or an early case where there's potentially other causes or explanations for neuropathy, having a tissue diagnosis, I think, seals the deal and confirms the diagnosis and allows you to start therapy. Uh, and your early. enthusiasm, um, you know, Jim's experience uh, with uh, nerve biopsies and detection of amyloid, do you share that enthusiasm for nerve biopsies or do you pursue other avenues? So we certainly do use nerve biopsies, but we might start with a skin biopsy. And if we see amyloid uh, in the skin and the patient has a mutation and you could do mass spec on the skin, uh, that skin amyloid, you might uh, avoid a nerve biopsy. And histologically, if you have the typical axonal changes uh, in a case in which you are suspicious of amyloid, is that sufficient, or do you really need to see uh, congophilic uh, material? Yeah, so I agree with what Michael says, and I, and I do think this is, I'm gonna step back a bit, and I'll come back to your question too. I, I, the genetic test means that somebody is predisposed to developing amyloidosis, but as we've all said, that's a genetic test and there's in, the incomplete penetrance and there are many different causes of neuropathy. So for me at this point, it's not good enough just to have a positive genetic test and development of some sort of neuropathy. I wanna really show that that person has amyloidosis. And to me as a neurologist, that is a tissue diagnosis. That's how I feel about it currently in uh, 2019. I may change over time, but I think the cardiologists have a little bit different perspective. Historically, I would have preferred to show it's actually in the nerve, because then I know that's the cause of the neuropathy. Um, I think now I've changed my position on that, and any sort of tissue confirmation of amyloid, whether that is a salivary gland biopsy, whether that's a fat pad biopsy, whether that's a skin biopsy is okay. And we have this new technique that we've been alluding to of mass spec where we can actually identify the protein so that you can now show that it's actually a TTR amyloidosis based on that amyloid confirmation. Now, I don't think, back to your specific question about histological findings on nerve biopsy, I don't think there's a specific finding on nerve biopsy other than amyloid that's specific for amyloid. In amyloidosis, you lose, you lose fibers, uh, you lose both myelinated and unmyelinated. You may lose unmyelinated fibers at a greater percentage than you lose large myelinated, but it's not a specific finding that you can make that diagnosis. So without actually seeing the congophilic amyloid deposition, I don't think you can make a diagnosis on nerve biopsy. All right, let's make this a little more provocative then. So we've had two large phase three trials that have led to FDA approved agents. One of the trials, a biopsy was required, and the other trial, it was not required. Does that alter the uh, uh, validity of the findings in your mind? No, I mean, and the patients in the trials were not uh, early patients necessarily. They were patients with a confirmed diagnosis, with a family history, so there were many other uh, uh, diagnostic criteria. So I think the, the diagnosis was quite secure. Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. People want to make direct comparisons of the two trials, the Apollo trial 
and the intertersen trial. And I think that really shouldn't be done. And the reason I think it shouldn't be done is that the inclusion criteria for the two trials were different. The endpoints were different. Uh, the intertersen trial did not take as severe neuropathy as the Petisaran trial did. Uh, and so to, to try to make direct comparisons and say one agent is better than the other, I think is a no-no. Also, coming back to the fact that Petisaran did not require a tissue diagnosis, as Michael is saying, I think the there were many other uh, inclusion criteria that makes it very likely that in fact they did have HATTR. And it, even though I say I like to have a tissue diagnosis, most of the patients who have the genetic abnormality and develop a neuropathy, that neuropathy will be due to HATTR, but not all of them will be due to HATTR.